Daychuck here with Queen Bee Creations. We have a really fun little project that we're going to be doing together. Obviously, working on this uh, old rocking chair. We're going to give it an upgrade and we're going to do it with transfers, but in a completely new, completely different way. If you like this video, you find it helpful, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, keep me coming at your feed. The transfers are extremely popular today for decorating up furniture, for giving it a new look, um, doing some intricate designs that you just wouldn't want to spend the time doing yourself. The limitation with the transfers, and really there's only two. I mean, they're beautiful, I use them. Uh, the limitations are one, they can be expensive. The other piece is that you are limited to whatever the vision or the design was of the creator. And sometimes your vision for a particular piece, you can't find a design in a transfer that's going to work or that's going to satisfy. And it also means that you can't personalize it, perhaps. So we're going to be using a technique where you're actually going to create your own transfers. And I'm going to show you how to do that. The beginning stages, though, we need to get some paint. What I do want to share with you, and one of the things that I want to mention while I'm getting my paint open here, is that this video is part of a creative collaboration with a number of other extremely talented artists that are all going to be giving you a lot of great tips, great advice. So once you finish watching me, um, hop on over down below. I'm going to list a link for you that you can use to be able to hop on to a lot of other videos and maybe, maybe um, discover a couple of new ones to be able to watch. It's always good to have some extra people in your repertoire. So the first step in this process, this piece has already been cleaned and, and degreased. It's an old piece. You can see that it's got this extra um, support bar in it. Not unusual in old pieces. I hate painting spindles, but I'm gonna be painting spindles. But really all that we're gonna be doing is putting on paint. And for this particular project, you could use the paint of your choice. It's all about the transfer that we're gonna to learn to do. It's not really about the paint. I'm going to be using any Sloan chalk paint in old white because it's what I've got. Um, you could use a clay based paint. You could use an all in one paint for this because we will be having to seal it before we go on to the transfer stage. So if you wanted to save yourself a step, you could use an all in one paint that has the sealer built in. Um, you could even use a latex. I never use latex, but if you love latex, <laughs> go ahead. It's not going to matter for this particular project. We're not going to be blending colors. The only thing that you want to consider when you're selecting your color is it's your base color. How is your design, your pattern going to work with it? I'm going to be actually applying kind of a watercolor look of some of the flowers. And so I am using white and I just want something very neutral and very soft and very classic to begin. You can choose whatever color is gonna be working best with your design. So these first steps, just as simple as this, paint your piece. come outside for the next step in the process and that's simply to do some sanding. So I have some really fine grit sandpaper where I just want to sand all over to just kind of smooth out, kind of a hand smooth feel to the paint before I move on to the next step and a little bit of a rougher to do some distressing. Once this is done, once I've got all the sanding, um, beautiful day out so I'm able to do it out here, I will take it back inside so that I can um, seal it. So before we move on to our transfer step, we wanna have this all nicely sealed so that our transfers can, can uh, slide and glide and move around nice and easily. So all that we're doing is we're sanding, doing it outside because it's just a messy, nasty job at the best of times.
we are outside for the next step in the process. Let me bring you up to date as to where we're at. I selected the images that I wanted to use for my chair and I actually roughly printed these out just on plain paper and laid them out on the chair just to get an idea of how many I needed because then I needed to print them out using a laser jet printer onto this specialty paper. Now this is a water slide decal or decal, whichever you say it, paper. Um, it's transparent. One of the things that you then do is you select your image, you print it on the glossy side of this paper, and then you come outside, ideally with a Verithane clear finish and we are going to spray these, just a light coating, three times. So let it dry in between each application. It only takes, um, you know, two or three minutes to be able to do that. But what we're looking at doing is sealing the ink. If you have, um, if you don't have a laser jet printer and you have an inkjet printer, print your images out, but let them sit for 24 hours before you start to seal them. The step after this requires us to be dipping these into water and we don't want the ink to activate with the water and release from our paper. It just doesn't work then. So we need to seal these on. So you're printing this onto the paper and I'll drop the link for you to be able to follow, to be able to find this. Apart from this, once we've sealed it with this, we're good to go. So very easy step. We're just lightly coating our images. I'm gonna do this three times on each of them, and then I'll meet you back inside for us to start to put them onto our piece of furniture. Here we are back inside now, and we're at the fun stage of this piece. So we have painted it, we have distressed and sanded it, we have sealed it. Now the sealing is an important step in this. We want to have a little bit of a slick surface so that when we go to apply our decals, if we need to slide them around, we're going to be able to move it a little bit more easily. Obviously, if you're doing, if you're applying them to ceramics or glass or metals, you're not going to have that issue. But rather than just having it on the raw paint, I prefer to have sealed it so I've got a little bit of a slicker surface to be able to, to get some movement. The next part is to get them to release from the backing. You're going to be applying them image side up. And my one word of warning, you know, and I've cut these images out, typically leaving a little bit of a border so I've got a little bit of playroom. But a couple of things to bear in mind when you're selecting your images. Because I've got a white background, I want to have the white background, background show up. And on some of my images, you'll see that there's white here. That's the paper. That is not my image. My images have all been printed on transparent backgrounds so that I will see the color of the chair through this. Where that becomes important is when you've got some of the background color showing through on the edging. If it wasn't transparent, let's say maybe it was a light gray, when I apply it to my white, I will see that light gray edge all the way around my image. So let's say maybe you were doing photos of the kids that you were applying on to something. You are going to be cutting with a tiny border around it, so you want to make sure that your images, as you're calling them up, you're putting them onto a transparent background. So just bear that in mind because learn from my trial and error, the first image that I'd ever printed out to use it looked like it was on a white background. It was actually um, uh, like a pale, pale gray and I applied it onto white, in which case it really showed. If you're doing it onto a dark color, it may be less of an issue, but if you're doing it onto a light color, go for a transparent background. Now, when this releases, it is like plastic wrap. It is very, very thin. So we, 30, 30 to 60 seconds in the water. It's gonna to wanna to curl up. Um, it doesn't have to be warm or ice cold or anything, just kind of room temperature water. You will feel, you'll be able to feel it when it starts to release. And 
with this, I like to kind of use the paper backing to help slide it off onto my piece, especially if they're big images. If you try and just lift the little bit of film to apply it, it's going to twist, it's gonna fold back on itself, you're gonna have a heck of a time. So, I just like to kind of wiggle the edge here and there to just see if it's releasing off. Um, I always have some paper towels handy because my hands get soaking wet and I want to have like a damp um, cloth and maybe a squeegee around as well to try and when I lay it out get the air bubbles out right okay so I just felt that and it's sliding which means the rest of the piece is probably doing the same okay so you're gonna want to kind of lay it in place and I'm going to want to slowly kind of use my one hand to hold the decal there and then just kind of slide my paper out from underneath. This is not something you want to rush because I don't want to tear my design and I want to have it laying mostly in place. All right, so you can see that there's kind of some wrinkles, but here's where I think that having sealed my piece really comes in handy because I, I can move this around. Can you see how I'm able to slide it around on the piece? It allows me to kind of reposition it. I'd actually like a little closer to that rail and until all the water dries you're still going to be able to move it around and all I want to do is get any air bubbles out get any wrinkles out as it dries it will adhere so I will leave this to dry overnight how awesome is this right this is your own decals that you're making that you're applying to this. Now, I've got some extra water around. So this still I can slide around. As it dries, it will adhere. One of the things that this allows you to do too, because I've got that clear background behind it, is to layer designs onto your pattern. Meaning, I've got all kinds of my little leaves cut out that I am going to be able to um, put on top of my pieces wherever it makes sense. So I'm, I'm looking at putting the big flowers on first and then I've got um, you know my big blue flowers but I've cut them down into small groupings to be able to, to, to fit into my design here and there. I can lay over any of my branches or um, any of my, de my designs there, I can lay them on top even, that you'll get, uh, because I've got it on a transparent background, you'll see the flower um, coming out from in behind it. And uh, so it's kind of cool that way. You get all the flexibility in the world with being able to lay these out in a way that makes sense for you and allows you to have a lot of creative freedom.